looked. Oh, it looks so good. I thought you got an illegal haircut. I showered. Um, I didn't. I'm so glad we don't have smell vision today. <laughs> oh, 4D. Mm, gets that. Uh -uh. 4D. Um, yeah, you definitely look like you got a haircut. That I was about to ask you where. <laughs> it's just there's product involved. Yes. So nice. Yes. I just want to one last time apologize, and I have it is recording now. I have the upgraded Zoom. I have done multiple tests today. I do just have a question, Jill. Yeah. Is there a way to record gallery view or is it only going to record speaker view? Um, do you have a choice up there? Oh, well, I say it says speaker view. So let's, hello, there's gallery view, but I don't see Colin. Oh, you should probably. Now I see Colin. Yeah, I can click back and forth between gallery view and speaker view. Hey, there's Colin, but then there's no Jill. <laughs> you can only have one of us. Let's see. No way. There's got to be a way. If you do, I don't know. Mine's Man, speaker view. I can see everybody. Yeah, I can see everybody too. I'm wondering how. I'm wondering how it's recording. Listen, we can't care. All right, it's I, I know it's recording. If we got volume, that's all. <laughs> yes, I feel so confident. God, we were on fire last week. It was crazy. I know. We're going to have to just try to pretend like we've never met you before. Oh, man. I know. Or we just play the best friend angle. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that Memorial Day? What a, what a crazy time. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> We won't tell any of your stories. Mm. You've heard them all. <laughs> Thank you so much. But thanks again. I really appreciate carving out time, both of you. I know everybody's busy. And thank you so much. Absolutely. And, and my apologies for running behind today. Oh, no, no worries. So glad when you said you were running behind. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy for behind. So thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Should we? What are we going to do? All right, Dee Dee, start it off. All right, guys, um, just want to introduce who we are. We've got Jill Forbes, Colin Moss, and me, Kennedy. And Jill and I are reaching out to Colin on behalf of Charleston's Mom Collective. And we're so thankful that um, to be on this call and have this time to interview you, Colin. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. Yes, you're quite welcome. And for those of you who don't recognize Cullen as yet, you will momentarily. Um, he is on the number one. Still, yeah. Still, Netflix show, Outer Banks. Woo! You Go for on. your hard work and well done. He plays Officer Shoot, um, but that is not the only thing he is known for. No, no. He has been acting. Tell us how long you've been acting, Cullen. Uh, I've been acting since I was about six years old. Uh, I mean, just, I, I grew up doing theater. Okay, um, great. So I've been doing theater for a lot of my life. Um, and, uh, but I, I just got into, I started um, going after film and television about 17, 18 years ago. Okay. Uh, that's when I got, got my start there. It's been a long, slow, uh, slow path, but I'm picking up momentum. Yeah, but the stuff that you've done is so good. I don't, yes. I'm a huge imb -er, So if I, you know, if I'm watching and I see someone, I'm like, he looks familiar. I and prefer so IMDb. Oh, do you? <laughs> um, <laughs> whatever. Um, but yeah, so I was looking through, I'm like, Hidden Figures, Mercy Street, which I don't know how many people saw that, but I kept it on my DVR. I love it. Oh, cool. um, and of course, One Tree Hill. Tell us how you kind of got here um slowly i got here um <laughs> i um I, I which version i let's see i from from um i was in winston-salem where i grew up um and where i started um where i had some really great uh acting teachers um at the little theater of winston-salem and um just as, as a child and then I uh, had an intensive summer uh, 
a summer program at North Carolina School of the Arts with some wonderful teachers there. And um, <clears throat> after I failed out of UNC Greensboro, <laughs> uh, my one and only semester and made a 0, 0.0, I moved back home. Um, and some friends of mine were going to North Carolina School of the Arts uh, inaugural year of School of Filmmaking. I started doing some student films. Okay. Um, with the with the film students and um, not my best friend's class, but the class behind him was a class that included Jody Hill and Danny McBride and Jeff Nichols um, and uh, Chris Gerard and uh, Jeff Bradley and Jeff Siebnick. Anyway, um, all these all these uh, crazy talents came out of that class. Anyway, it was a great school and I got to, and we all knew of each other, but didn't, we weren't buddies back then, those guys. But uh, my buddy Frank Eaton uh, was going to school there my, and Sean Lou Allen. And anyway, I did student films with these guys and, um, and I liked it. And then we shot an indie, a short indie film in Winston-Salem that never got finished. <laughs> we shot this, we shot it on six millimeter. It, was, it looked really cool uh, with, you know, um, piece to get you shoot on short ends you get you get these bits of film real of actual film it's the it's the film that didn't get used on other on, mm. on from other movies and <laughs> so like just total total guerrilla filmmaking and um and we our dp was from wilmington page thomas um was our director of photography and we rented all of our equipment from wilmington screen gem studios and when we returned the equipment to Screen Gems, we all fell in love with Wilmington, which at the time was a film mecca. Yes. Um, the, third, the third largest, um, th th and as far as film production in the States. There's New York, there's LA, and then there's Wilmington, North Carolina. Yes. Um, and uh, so we, we all, we decided, uh, Sean Llewellyn and Frank Eaton and this guy, Damien Smith and I all moved to Wilmington to pursue this career. Um, they're very, you know, Frank now does uh, shoots political ads, lives in Red Hook, New York, and Sean is a uh, really, I mean, and he writes. And Sean Lou Allen is a writer and um, a camera operator and DP. Um, so and uh, and now I'm acting. And Damien Smith is doing something somewhere. Um, <laughs> I don't know, but uh, it took a while to to get off the ground. But but Wilmington was where it kind of where everything took off. Um, is, but it took me a while. I, I got into the theater scene in Wilmington, which is invaluable. I, I really got to hone, hone my craft All doing right. in stages in Wilmington. And then um, and after working many, many jobs, including working at Screen Gym Studios and the lighting and grip shop, you know, I get to you know, see behind the scenes and uh, learned grip and electric equipment. I worked as an electrician on sets. I worked, I did as a swing grip electric and uh, I worked art department. Um, and then uh, in 90, 96 or uh, no, pardon me. No, 2000, 2000, 2002, 2001, 2002. I finally, um, I got an agent and, uh, and started, started working on it. There's, um, a short film that one of the crew members from Dawson's Creek, um, which was was uh, one of the went, while I was working at the studios, um, one of the crew members Jay had written a short film and he'd seen me on stage in Wilmington. Um, he came to I used to be a part of a um, a weekly comedy troupe, Changing Channels. We performed every Thursday up at City Stage, uh, where I did a lot of other theater. And uh, we were just bawdy, um, beer-fed sketch comedy um, <laughs> I love it. up there. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Changing Channels was amazing. Um, but uh, anyway, he'd seen me up there and liked me and wanted me and, it's, and knew me from the lighting and grip shop, uh, from checking in, checking out equipment, and, and asked me to come audition for this. And he had um, Lisa May and Craig Fincannon were running the auditions. Um, and they're one of the biggest casting directors in the Southeast. They cast tons of, tons of stuff. They, they, they cast Eastbound, regional casting for Eastbound and Down, mm -hmm. um, also for uh, the Outer Banks, for Outer Banks. Um, but that's where I met the Finn Cannons, thank God. And, uh, and they said, do you have an agent? You, we, we like what you do. And they cast me in this little short film. 
and I didn't have an agent and they were about to do Cold Mountain. They were about yes. to cast for Cold Mountain. And, uh, and they said, we want you to come read for that. Let's get you an agent. And I, they got me with JTA out of Charlotte. Uh, the, um, yeah. So that's, that's where I got started. My, like one of the first things I, I booked was um, probably Dawson's Creek. And then, then I got the notebook and, um, and One Tree Hill. And, and, then, and, then, and then things happened. So what you're so saying awesome. is to all those. I'm not done. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just just saying to all those darling children who think that they're going to wake up tomorrow and become headlining actors, buckle up. Buckle up, buttercup. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, <laughs> that's probably, it's probably not going to happen that way. It happens that way for, for, for some people. But um, most of the people that I know that have found any success in it um, found that success just by sticking it out. I mean, and just uh, and uh, in with so many hills and valleys in it. I mean, uh, just droughts um, of no work, and um, you you just have to persevere through all that stuff. And hearing no, like ninety. 5% of the time and then you know I mean you're booking a small percentage of roles you're lucky if you have steady auditions there are the and um, you're lucky if your auditions are even sent to the director um, so I you know there are all these different gates that you've got to kind of that you've got to wait, wait to open for you um, but to and I'm not not to dissuade anyone it's just uh, it is it's it can be a long and bumpy ride or you can be um, you can be a 19 year old, um, young man, like, uh, like Jonathan Davis, who's like one of the, who plays Pope on Outer Banks. And, and I don't know how long Jonathan's been at it, um, honestly, but I mean, or any of these, those young guys in that show, um, and this is not to discount their stories, but to get in at that, at that age on that level, woo, wow, how cool. And they all deserve it. Every one of them. I mean, they're great actors and just and, and good people so. mm -hmm. okay so let's talk outer banks so nice. here's my outer banks story i am meeting on a zoom call with my church small group and someone says have you watched outer banks no i haven't watched it oh you have to see it it's like you're on the edge of your seat every time and i was like you guys need to know i don't do that kind of show i do like the hallmarks and the reality <laughs> <laughs> like Life is crazy enough. I don't need to watch it on TV. Oh, no, no. It's not scary. It's fine. Okay. Church people are liars. <laughs> but I watch like through my fingers. But this is what I don't understand. What is making the average middle-aged mom love this show? I don't get it. Why am I watching the show? I mean, the actors are very unattractive. No, uh, it's unfortunate that they weren't blessed with good looks or a sense of health. No. Any of those things. So... They are some healthy looking kids. Healthy. Um, what a great looking bunch. I actually yeah. said to my husband at one point, why does Sean B always wear a shirt unbuttoned? And he says, are you really asking that question? <laughs> <laughs> a little eye candy for the older women's. Like, oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> and, and fun, fun fact, uh, Chase Stokes, who plays John B, um, was, was born with no nipples and they've got to draw no, you are so full of it. <laughs> no, 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 no. Fool me once. Those are, those are Chase's nipples. That you see. <laughs> okay, good. Oh, they weren't in here. Doing it all. All natural. I, you may not ever see this, Chase, but I'm sorry I brought your nipples. That's <laughs> you're so funny. Uh, okay, so why why is a middle aged lady like this show? Tell me. I think I think you just. I hit the nail on the head. I mean, um, cause there's some, well, what it, it's it, there. It's, it's a beauty. It's, it's, it's good eye candy. Um, and it's, a, and it's, um, it's also, it's, a, it's, it's escapism and it's, it's like, they, they, I think they capture pretty well that, that excitement of, of being that age and, and of, um, you know, the adventure, <laughs> Yes. Of being that age of just like, if, you know, going, you know, hanging out in, in, a, in an unbuilt house and like they like that first scene where you where you meet 
the Pogues, the uh, and they're they're just hanging out drinking beers, and in this old, in, in an unbuilt home, in an unfinished home, and that's like that's so you know so much of so much of high school you know you can you can harken back or I don't not everybody but but to, to hanging out with a crew or you know, drink drinking beers in the woods or or you know in a park or in a in a un finished home and um and just that that kind of that freedom of being able to not give a shit at that age a little bit yeah. language um but uh there some of that and, and they're 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 classical elements built into the story too like the sort of romeo and juliet thing of um it's there, there's just so many layers to to the the, the storytelling um and i'm i'm rambling surprise um but you have, you, I mean, you've got, you've got the outsiders, you've got, um, you know, the, the outsiders slash West Side Story slash Romeo Juliet, the haves right. and the knots and the, the star-crossed lovers and, um, and, and then, and then you've got, you've got treasure hunts. I mean, so. Millions of dollars. But, but good looking kids. I mean, I mean, you know, you've got good looking kids. You've got compelling story, like a right. compelling story um and and just and they they make they make that adventure you know look fun and harrowing like you know you get in, you get invested in to these actors um yeah. so it's just it's good storytelling it's that kind of that does that has seemed to defy um not genre really but it, it's uh to defy a demog a, spe a specific demographic because yeah. um, I've talked to men and women alike, like my age and um, and beyond, who got in it and, and got into it and binged it, and you know, old classmates of mine who started it for me, but <laughs> stuck around for John B's nipples. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the uh, every everybody's loving it. Yeah. So if you're just joining us. Jill, Dee Dee, here with Helen Moss. Hello, everybody. Daughter Banks, we are with Charleston Moms Collective. And um, so talk about your transformation as a character. Like, I, in the beginning, thought you were a bad guy. Bad guy. And Not I good. don't know that you are. I still don't know. I think season two. By the way, if you'd like to make an announcement about a coming season two, now's your chance. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, Nothing. It's looking good. It's looking good. Okay. I, I still really haven't heard any um, anything. I've got a I got a text from one of my good theater friends in in Wilmington. He's a brilliant actor. He, he works. He's he works in film and television also. Uh, Justin Smith, the, who employed me in almost every one of his restaurants. <sighs> really good guy, Justin Smith. Everybody, a uh, fantastic actor. Um, direct. He's directed me in a lot of theater. Including Debbie Does Dallas, the musical, where I, uh, the which is the musical I was doing when I met my wife. <laughs> true. <laughs> that's, that's, that's true. I cannot today. Debbie Does Dallas, the musical. Anyway, Justin Smith texted me earlier today. I'm dead. That's funny. It's, it's a comedy. And there's no nudity. Uh, oh, this is true. I'm sorry. I'm so interested. Hey, buddy, congrats on season two. And I said, what? And he said, you. He said, your show got picked up for season two. I said, did it? He said, I don't know. My aunt and uncle told me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, was like, I don't know. I made it cool. Thanks. I, but I, I haven't heard it from any official source yet. But it's looking very good for a season two. Okay. Um, All right. So talk and, about you. Are okay. You for, uh, good? So about Deputy Shoup. Um, yeah, he starts. He's small town deputy. Um you know, there's not much to do. There's not much on the radar before, um, before this kind of avalanche of activity uh, hits off, and um, and so kind of quiet Outer Banks town um, with not much to do. And uh, as long as you know, he has this kind of "if I don't see it, I'm not worried about it" kind of attitude. And I think he applies that to himself and his own actions mm -hmm. as. Uh, as a lawman that if they don't see it, what does it matter? So he's got a little, he, he rides a blurry line as far as ethics and his, uh, yeah, eth his, his code of ethics goes. So skims a little money. Who's going to notice it's, uh, it's money from a crime scene. Um, 
wets the beak. And uh, so, so yeah, it's, it's a little blurry there. And they, and they originally wrote him to be a little, a little more, um, a little, a little more of a bad guy. Like, and there was a scene that they had, that they had written in when I bored the, um, the Pogue, they took the, the little, the Pogue boat when John B's underwater. Yes. Um, and there was a scene where they had, they had Shoop kind of staring down Kiara, um, Mad- Madison Bailey's character, just staring a little too long. And, and it, was, it was a skeevy little scene. And, and then my partner, uh, Deputy Plum, who's played by Shel Ramos, Plum says, hey, Shoop, you done there? She kind of calls me out on it. And I'm like, yep, yep, uh, yep done, yeah, sorry. Um, so I, I wanted to fight that a little bit and, but, but I mean, we shot that version of it, but I did some just to where it was just, it, it was, I didn't intend to stay. It was just, I did just stare too long. And I was like, ah, I wasn't, I didn't mean to like that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, but as, as, as we went on through the season and they, and I was trying to imbue him, I wanted him to be likable and more well-rounded, like more three-dimensional, um, more nuanced, if you will. Um, and, and I want, I, w- I wanted him, I wanted to play the humor that comes with somebody that has that kind of self-importance. I didn't want to lose the swagger and stuff, but I wanted that to be kind of comical, which I think it is. And you got a small town deputy who thinks he's, you know, the, big, he's big the king mountain. of shit mountain, um, <laughs> or pardon me. He's like, you know, he's just, um, he thinks a lot of himself. So I wanted to play the humor the, and the, fortunately, um, Jonas and Josh, uh, Jonas and, and Josh Pate, who had created the show with Shannon Burke, uh, one of our uh, writers is amazing. They're all amazing, but fortunately they're, they're very inclusive, like, and uh, collaborative, like with the actors. And so, I mean, they, they were picking up what I was putting down and started tailoring the character towards what I was doing. And, and then they liked it, thank goodness. And, um, and just started writing and writing shoot that way. And he does make a turn, like he's still kind of self-important and, and hazy as far as like, you know, what, where he stands on things. But then I think once the, um, once things escalate and the heat gets turned up, I think he, he does his job. I mean, he's, he's trying, he, um, he takes it seriously, he does his job. And are we giving spoilers away to people? I don't know. Uh, no. Something happens. Right. Something happens that that makes him have have to kick into gear, and he does. And then and there's someone is someone is wrongfully accused, and you know there's a um, anyway. There, so in in his pursuit, like there's another transformation there that um, where Shoop has is like is out for vengeance, kind of right at first, and and the rest of the police department. Uh, the rest of the sheriff's department are out for vengeance, but that turns into it's it, things. He starts putting pieces of the puzzle together, and he realizes there may be more of a story, and the 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 need for vengeance becomes a need for justice, and he wants to do things right, and he doesn't want to. He he wants to get to the bottom of things and find the truth, and not just um, a scapegoat. Yeah, I'm glad he wasn't sleazy. He was never sleazy. I just couldn't figure out if he was on the up and up or not so i think by the end of it he i hope it's clear that he's that he wants Mm -hmm. good things to happen um i mean that he wants the right thing to happen Mm -hmm. Uh, yes okay well let's talk about the locational elephant in the room i'm asking for the people the people need to know here in charleston you know there's some people here who might have a guilty pleasure of just watching certain reality shows to find out where in Charleston they're going to be. So those of us who are really into our city want to know, why is it called Outer Banks? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know because you Because it's shot in the Outer Banks. Oh. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, they, it was not even shot near Charleston. It's so this, weird. <laughs> um, I think so. So I, Jonas and Josh are are both uh, North Carolina natives, as as I am, um, and they're actually I think they're they're both from Winston Salem too. I think, hmm. um, or they they spend a good bit of time in Winston Salem. And our um, 
our, our DP, our director of photography, Brad Smith, his uncle was my uh, seventh grade English teacher and a coach at my at Summit wow. School. Uh, and I just found that out because he put he texted a very an embarrassing old yearbook picture of me. Oh no! Um, but uh, so they're they're North Carolina natives and in the Outer Banks. I grew up going to the Outer Banks. Um, beautiful area, but it 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 is. Um, there's an isolation with that. It's like the Outer Banks are kind of, are, they are um, apart from everything. And so, and I, I know Josh and Jonas had been to the Outer Banks. And so when they're writing this story, they wanted to, to have that element of being isolated and have it be more cut off from the rest of the world so that when they're trying to recover from the hurricane things, it's all that stuff g comes into play, like with the power, the not getting power back and um, Hayward having to, you know, they're running supplies to the other Island. Um, so, so those are real, those are real factors in a place like the Outer Banks. They wouldn't be necessarily a factor in Wilmington or in Charleston, um, even on, even our surrounding islands, like even like, Kiowa maybe I mean um, but so they there's there's the factor that they wanted that feeling of being cut up um, you know being apart but practically you can't and pragmatically you can't you it's just not going to work out that well to shoot in the Outer Banks also Netflix and, and Josh and Jonas I think wanted to shoot in Wilmington where uh, Jonas lives um, but Netflix is not shooting in North Carolina for uh, the HB2 bill has um, a lot to do with that. That's mostly what it is. Um, they, uh, North Carolina really cut their nose off to spite their face with, <laughs> with uh, getting rid of the film instead of incentives and then that. Like, so that's, um, they won't shoot in North Carolina. So they came to Charleston and it's beautiful. Like, so it's and but why did everybody's like well why okay so it's shot in charleston why do they call it the outer banks why don't they call it charleston why don't they call it low country or whatever and <laughs> and uh and i i was i'd asked jonas about that and he was like he was like yeah he's like look it's just fiction man he's like it's just because we want, want to call it outer banks it's one that's cool too yeah. you know we want to have that cut, to have it be cut off that idea of it being cut off but he's like, obviously, it's not counter, you know, it's not Outer Banks. He's like, that's why I'm throwing, you know, what, what, you know, I'm, I'm mentioning Figure Eight Island and Masonboro Island and Snow's Cut. Those are all Wilmington uh, things, and uh, and and so it's everybody's all confused. They're like, this is doesn't make sense. One, it's not Wilmington. It, it's not. It's not the Outer. What is it? And he's like, it's fiction. It's my story. It's like it's you know my version. I wrote it then. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, I wrote it. It's, You're saying the show's fiction? Stop. It is based on most, it's based on my life. Um, oh. That thing's my belief. I see it now, the nipples, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I too have nipples. Um, so, um, okay, so it's fiction. We just need to stick with that. Do you hear that, people? It's fiction. It's fiction. Um, it's fiction. Now, were, were you going to ask about the ferry, about taking the ferry to Chapel Hill? No, but <laughs> that was, I've done that so often. We usually that, do that as well. IMBD says that's the one blooper in the show, by the way. That, 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 that is, <laughs> it's, it's problematic, as they <laughs> say. But, um, and, and Jonas has, and Josh, and Shannon, they, those guys have a great sense of humor about it. I mean, yeah. they got blasted about it, and they were like, "We know, we know, you can't take a ferry from anywhere to Chapel Hill." Right. Um, Funny. But they, you do have to take a ferry to get to the mainland, which they right. they had, and they did have a scene in there where John B and Sarah then get in an Uber that in she, an Uber. yes, and then it would be a long Uber ride to yeah. Chapel Hill. Still, she but, has the money though. She's got the money. That's but it's right. it's like if you if you shoot somebody if you if you show somebody getting milk out of the fridge and getting cereal and then you cut to them eating their cereal nobody's wondering well how did the cereal and the milk get in the bowl <laughs> like, we it's didn't see it. 
<laughs> how did it happen? It's a, it's an, it's editing. And it, it, but jo, but Jonas admits he's like, that's something we should have kept it. We should have showed, we should have shown them pouring the milk in the cereal in the bowl. Right. Yeah. Because it's a longer, it's, it's a longer leap to take uh, when you have somebody getting out, you know, getting on a ferry, and then hey, we're in Chapel Hill. Look at that. So funny. So. Um, if you're just joining us, Charleston Moms Collective here with Colin Moss from the one and only Outer Banks. And if you're one of the 10 people that hasn't watched the show, it is not child appropriate. So don't sit down with the family night and watch the Outer Banks. Um, so this was what Dee and I have been talking about was you just released a number one show during a, like a worldwide pandemic. How different is the way TV and film work now than when you started 17 years ago. Like this would never happen. You would have been dead in the water. Never would have got like this is just crazy that you're on this household name in the middle of nobody being together. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. Nobody's going to the movies. Nobody's doing any of that stuff. And you guys have just sailed to the top. So so yeah, I mean there's that um silver lining, I guess if you will. Uh, yeah. Like, well, everybody's stuck at home they're going to watch our show. Yay. <laughs> Love it. Um, but it, it's um, just the whole, uh, the, the streaming platforms now, like um, that, you know, when, where you drop a show in its entirety, yep. all, you know, um, at once, um, that's just a different thing to, that's, that's the, the binge watching that, yeah. which was impossible to do. So you can have, you're not wondering if people are going to tune in next week when it's at, you know, when you're um, people's nature now, especially is like, Oh, what's another? Oh, what's another? Oh, what's another? It's like, it's like yeah, same. It's, yeah. you know, it's, it's like eating Pringles or whatever, not, not, or any potato chip. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> so um, I'm not partial to Pringles any more than I am any other. Um, Are you um, sponsored by Pringles? I'm sponsored by Pringles. <laughs> it's like eating a delicious Pringles potato chip right out of the can. It's like, it's like magic when you eat Pringles. <laughs> Once you pop, you can't stop. Um, <laughs> but, but just like, yeah, just say, you know, go, go, go for another, go for another. And that's what, that's what all these dropping a whole season at once allows people to do. And so there's not, you're not watching Nielsen ratings, which was a thing if you, they had, random households selected to be in Nielsen house and those so you're you were a Nielsen home oh yeah we got the postcard the whole thing yeah so so you, and they bring the box and so they know they can track what people are watching well now there's you know Netflix knows how many people are tuning in and um it's uh it's it's it is crazy different I'm, I don't think um just yeah, that it, it, that something can blow up that quickly, and you're watching it happen. In the in, in social media is another thing. Like you've got people, you've got people just blasting it on on Instagram or Facebook or uh, Twitter. You know that, that's or TikTok, as which the kids are doing now. They're TikToking. They're taking it. They're crazy kids. They're doing all do. these all these ticks and tocks out there. Um, and and they, and they're doing their TikTok contests, like to who can TikTok their TikTok your favorite scene from Outer Banks, and mm -hmm. like that's that's what's that's what's new about it. Just like just how quickly something is disseminated, um, like that. But but it's great, you know, that we were number one above, like. Some some really good shows like the yeah. B Barack Obama documentary, That's got so and like, and we, and we beat the Tiger King. I mean, we, I, we, we um, to but we just to, even if we weren't number one, I mean, to stay in the top ten for for that long, right after it came out, um, it's crazy. So what was different, like like being a part of One Tree Hill, um, which I was on for nine seasons. Wow. Um, uh, but uh it was which went nine seasons but that was a show where you it, it was like this little engine that could because you don't you don't know how it's gonna it was following in the footsteps of dawson's creek and like the oc um 
and um, it was shot in Wilmington, North Carolina. And, you know, as we're shooting the season, you know, there's this question of like, or even after the, you shoot a pilot, like, are we going to get, are we going to get enough, you know, are we going to get, go to series? Yeah. Okay. We went to series. Now it's just like, as the season's winding down, guys, we don't know if we're going to get a season two and um, you know, you're just, you're, they don't, you're waiting for it to catch fire. You know that there's popularity, but now this, there's a, this immediate feedback and response. And so, I mean, I think it's a foregone conclusion that we'll have a season two, but you would think it's a weird time, but because the same thing that, that got us this part of the people quarantining that got us this crazy viewership, because what else are you going to do? Right. Is also that leaving a big question mark as far as like when can when production would be able to start back on on anything because of this yeah. um yeah. So. and also like your life is going to change just you know a few months ago you were just Colin Moss living in Charleston and now you're gonna have to go out to dinner with your family and all these crazy middle-aged women are gonna be like oh my god <laughs> so your um, whole life is gonna change and you don't you haven't experienced it yet you haven't been outside to know no, true, true. It's it, um, and it's gonna happen. You know, this this is not a poor me, but this is it's gonna happen less for me than it is for the for the uh, the, the beautiful young men and women of yeah. of Outer Banks. You um, think. Chase and Rudy uh, and John and John da Jonathan Davis, JD and Madeline and Madison, all these guys, Austin North, and Drew Starkey. Uh, good. I mean, they they they're gonna get it. I yeah. Mean, um, and Chase was saying that already that, you know, he, they, they did went through a drive through or something and the entire staff came to the window and two of the That's girls so were funny. crying. And I mean, this was like a, a week or two ago. And um, so there it's happening. Matt and Madison Bailey was shopping at a, at Whole Foods and she was like, it happened. She texted us there. We have a, an OBX group text and she was like, okay, it's, it's happened. She was like, Whole Foods got recognized. And immediately everybody was like, you weren't wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That would have. Uh, it's interesting. I'll be interesting to see, like, because Colin, you've been working for so long, and and also just, I'm not saying you're much older, but you're a little older than than the young. I mean, I feel like age for me has given me a little perspective. Yeah. I mean, you're brutally handsome. We all know, <laughs> but um. No, but like, I wonder, it'll be interesting as a young person, that's probably a lot to deal with, you know, it, it all, anyway, I'm, it's just interesting yeah. that you have some perspective and maturity, but when it does come your way, it, it's just, I don't know, I, I kind of forget about that aspect of now everything is going to be for public consumption, you know, like think about Chase trying to get a burger and then the whole crowd gawking that's going to be interesting it is it is interesting you know it was something that 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 we saw that i got to see too too with um with one tree hill and with dawson's creek with yeah, the, with a right. young with that young actress from from those shows and they were because they it, it wasn't that immediately it, it wasn't that immediate uh, because right. you know they could shoot their first season <laughs> pretty much you know before uh, before getting going out and getting mobbed or anything. I mean, um, but now, but I mean, I remember as One Tree Hill was going on, like I remember the, and, and the, along with it, social media was kind of blossoming and becoming what it was. You know, I remember just how startling it was for um, some of the actors, especially like Sophia and, and Hillary and Bethany Joy Lentz, like who, at, at people who would, you know, pretend to be them on social media or hack in and get their pictures and right. um, and uh, the the violations of privacy and and everything that 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 are part of that um, and um, and that that's going to be something interesting for these for yeah. for these young young bucks to um, experience and and it, and it's, it's and it's interesting because we're also encouraged. You know, social media is such a part of this thing, and you know, you're encouraged somewhat to engage, and it's healthy to engage the fans and social media, and the, and the fans are wonderful, and we, we, you know, you're not, 
without them, you're not, <laughs> you're not successful. And so they are, they are the lifeblood and they are what keeps the train moving along. But there's this, you know, when you're sharing everything with these people and you, you do, you want them to feel that they know you because that's, that helps in the popularity of the show. And that's what all this social media stuff is about is like, Hey, where you, you know, where your, where your TV friends. And, and, right. uh, and with that, somebody sees there's like, you're blurring that, that line and, and the lines of, of privacy and what that is and what's, what's expected um, what what people can expect from you, um, you know, that with that sort of engagement, um, it's interesting. It's it's really crazy to to see what what's going to become. Yeah, this. you do a great job with your social media. Didi is like a big crazy Elon Musk Instagram fanatic. Um, but I've noticed that you really interact with your people. You answer phone, respond, and I mean that's just the time thing. Like I know it's part of your job and. Yeah, and and it's and I enjoy it. I really do. Um, I, I enjoy I enjoy engaging with people and talking and, and answering questions and stuff. But I also I'm not I'm I'm not as um, avid about it as some people because I've got kids and 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 I don't want to I don't want to I don't want them to see me do this all the time. So and that's what it would t I mean the kind of the upkeep with yeah. with the I'll cover the product. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, but I, it, it it's it's crazy you want you know there's this balance of like staying on top of it and and living <laughs> yeah yeah it is nuts well that is a great segue to the yes it is Beauty and jill from Carlson awesome moms collective with cullen moss and um we want to talk about your life outside of acting and in Carlson and parenting and all this. So Dee Dee, why don't you do that? So Cullen. So Dee Dee. So I'm glad I'm really glad you're here. <laughs> so you mentioned, I think you mentioned that you have children. Can you tell us how many children you have in their ages? Since the moms collective, we're moms here. Yeah. Um I have three children and okay. um my oldest son Dixon um is actually is he's not in He's not here with us right now. He's in um, he's in Maryland with his mother, right. um, and he's he usually stays with me year round. But once once the online, he's so there's Dixon who's sixteen. There's Louie who just turned six, and there's Emmett who will be four later this month. Um, all wonderful boys. But uh, when Dixon's school when once school got canceled and online classes, he got about a weekend doing his online classes here when. We just realized that the chaos of the screaming little brothers was going to be too much. And so his mother would, with whom I, my wife and I have a great relationship, um, um, met, met me halfway and took him. And so he's in Maryland, has her undivided attention and, and quiet, peace and quiet. Can I go to Maryland? Go, get, yes. Same. Get in line. <laughs> yeah, um, I would enjoy. They're, they're near DC, but, um, but yeah, I've got I've got the three the, the three kids and um, I have them. They're here. They're present. They're being like super good and quiet. And, yeah, um, I'm waiting for the. I'm waiting. I mean, I'm on borrowed time. Somebody's gonna come in. Um, but this Colin, is my I did. This son's room, by the way. Those, um, that's not. <laughs> and that's there's not, Iron Man. not my my life right there. But Iron Man right there. Love of Iron Man. You. Are Wait a minute, were you in Iron Man? I was in Iron Man 3. That's right. correct. I blew up. Um, I was I was in uh, the subject of uh, the yep, the stuff. The, the guy the, the third guy, the guy the uh, Yes, I know what you're talking about. Guy, guy Pierce's character. Uh, yeah, he's he's testing out the extremists super soldier stuff and uh, and I have a bad reaction to and it you and I blow up. You blew slap up, tore up. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you are a parent and I am, um, one of my favorite things is that, you know, just in talking with you, talking about you're from North Carolina and have been able to work in the South. I love that you've been able to stay with your family and not have to go on location, which is really, I, I think that's an interesting, uh, feature to your acting career but yeah um oh sorry go ahead no i'm, I'm go you go 
Um, yeah, uh, the, I've been fortunate to have been able to stay in the Southeast. I mean, and I've worked pretty much, I've been relegated to work in the Southeast as, as a Southeastern actor. So, um, That's awesome. working in North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, Louisiana, some stuff in Virginia. Um, uh, and my, my wife is an actor also. Um, and, um, it's in the Southeast and there, the opportunities that, um, that would come up or kind of, you, you kind of get the trickle down roles a little bit and that's, that's changing. It's that the landscape is changing that you get the sec, you know, you're not going to get to audition for, um, for like a series regular you, that's how it used to be you wouldn't you you're not going out for the bigger roles and you're you're going to get the day player roles and stuff but slowly that's changing i mean i think there's less of a stigma um applied to the southeastern actor i think they know that we're worth our salt now and we, awesome. can, we can play with the big boys but um it, one of the reasons that that i have the resume that i do is because of working in the southeast it's a yeah. smaller pond and um and the just kind of the the business just has grown up around me. Like uh, Georgia is such a hub of activity now. It's like mm -hmm. I think more more film and television shot in Atlanta last year than anywhere in the world. Um, and uh, there's some political stuff going on there. It'll be interesting to see how that landscape changes. But um, and then. Charleston, you know, South Carolina things have started um, blowing up and it's so to be able to to work at home and not go too far has sure. been such a gift and to, to be able to come back home at the end of a day, you know, I, I'll still go on location, but it's, you know, there's, it's not going out to LA. And I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not caught up in the grind yes. that, that actors who are brave enough to, to go to LA or New York um, get caught up in. Um, I would yeah. have the kind of, I had my own grind going on and right. I've worked a, a lot of supplemental jobs yeah. um, to support my acting habit. And it's only been about the last three or four years that I've found the momentum to where I, I don't have to have another job. So and my wife doesn't have to either. Um, so so it's crazy, but there was a moment, you know, there's when my first son was born where I kind of had to step back and say, well, I can't, I don't, what can I do? <laughs> uh, what, what am I, I can wait tables. I can move furniture. These are the things I know I can do. I could, yeah. or I, you know, I could go full bore into grip and electric work or, uh, you know, work on the crew on the other side of the camera. Um, I, could, I could go to Miller Mott and get my massage therapy license. Yes. Um, just all these things that were, I had to kind of weigh out. It's like, is, is, is it pragmatic to, to try to stay the course of, of wanting to be an actor? And, um, and I'm so glad I decided to do, to do that. And it wasn't pragmatic, but, um, but I, was, I decided, hey, you know, I want to, I'd like to show my kids that they can do whatever that if they, stick to it and don't give up they can they can they can live their dream you know yeah. and again, um it might take a really long time and you're gonna go through it and you might have to borrow some money along the way and uh, right. I uh yeah that's just i love that i'm just partial kind of, it's my home oh, oh sorry jill no, that's okay don't you think we all kind of go through that i mean maybe it's not acting or whatever but i think that there's at some point all of us who are parents and are married or have like an adult moment go, yeah. is this stupid? Like, do I, <laughs> is this a pipe dream or, you know, or have a parent that go, I think that's a fine major, but have you ever thought about this as your minor? Like as a backup? Sure. Like, I think that we all hit that and, you know, there is a decision right or wrong. And I don't know if there is a right one, it's person to person, but we all have to go, is this dumb and I, you know the the success stories are on both sides where I thought you know I decided this dream wasn't going to go anywhere so I got I got practical and then the other yeah. side where it's like I didn't want to go practical and it worked out for me so yeah I do think it doesn't matter whether you're an actor or whatever at some point you go what am I doing yeah well the, and, and there's so many ways to make it to make it happen like I'm like I yeah I'm 
I'm like, I'm on the, the, I'm on one end of it to where I'm kind of, I'm starting to pick up steam and whatever, because I stuck this stuff out for better or for worse. And, um, but there's like, I probably would be just as happy if I had just kind of put the brakes on and, and took a more pragmatic route and just, and still just as long as I had acting in my life, as long as I was doing yeah. theater or, um, or improv or what, you know, um, had some outlet for that. And, and some of my friends who are wonderful actors and deserve as much, if not more success as, as I have, or um, and anyone has who with any success, they just like some people, they, they were just like, Hey, you know what? I'm tired of getting, of, of getting my ass handed to me at, in auditions and, and not, not getting the work. It's just not worth it mentally and emotionally. And uh, it's just, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to go, I'm going to go build houses. I'm going to go, I'll, I'm going to, you know, do something pragmatic and they still do theater and they still audition for things every now and then. And, um, you know, you just find what, what's, what works for you and what you can withstand. Right. And what you can enjoy, how much you can enjoy and balance and yeah. 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 Um, and, yeah. That's it. Oh, well, I, so part of, part of the, the journey, so the, there's the whole Wilmington thing that happened. And then um, but when my, my wife, what brought us to Charleston, my wife grew up here. She, um, she grew up on Sullivan's Island. And um, when my ex-wife, when my oldest son's mother, um, she, we had both lived in Wilmington and had him half and half, but she was getting ready to move to Germany with her new husband. And um, so there's this moment where it was like, we weren't, we weren't, we didn't have to stay in North Carolina anymore um, uh. because we, he was going to be with us. Actually, originally he was going to go to Germany that fell through. And, um, and he, and so fortunately he's, uh, he's with us in Charleston. Um, but, uh, but that was, that was a moment where we were saying, well, there's no work left in North Carolina really. Why are we still here? My family's in Winston-Salem. They were four hours away. So we moved, we chose to move here to have the benefit of her family to um, help out with the kids when I'm especially as I was getting more and more work on the road in Georgia or wherever. Um, it would, the benefit is it's just been invaluable to have her mother and sister anyway the cavalcade of aunts and uh, and her grandmother's still here her 94 year old grandmother um, and uh, and then fortunately. Um, the righteous gemstones and um and outer banks came along and i got to work in at home like you know really, so awesome. to, to literally come home at the end of the day with those jobs awesome. very cool do you know how we were saying like uh what am i doing here what should i do let's talk about parenting because that what am i doing <laughs> is kind of my philosophy yeah. so tell me colin if you will what is some stage parenting advice or what's your philosophy or style of parenting? What did I say? That is literally what am I doing? <laughs> and I'm usually doing it wrong. Uh, just, um, well, <laughs> to, it's I th whatever, whatever works for you. Yeah. That's one, that's one thing. I mean, and I, I can't think of like, like a hard thing of like one super sage, like this is the right way to do it because every right. child is different. Every dynamic, every household dynamic is different. Yeah. Everybody's tolerance levels are different for. And that um, changes daily. I mean, yeah. for me. so my kids are in first. Yeah. yeah I'm still trying to figure it out. And I have days where my, my wife and I have days where, especially these days where we're, we're all here and the kids aren't in school and um and we're trying to work out we're just, we're just like what works what do they what do, what do they need and i've i've i went through it with i have a 17 other boy who's about to be 17 so i i should know this stuff by now mm -mm. i don't uh, so i'm still figuring it out and like and i feel like there are days where i'm like yeah we we did that we we handled the hell out of that day that we, yeah. we did it and then the other <laughs> day where where I'm, I, like we just look at each other and say, I think we failed today. Yes, yeah, we failed. Yeah, yeah. Like, but everybody's good. alive, and that's but everybody's so alive. Important if you can keep everybody alive by the end of the day, everybody's alive and not 
you know, uh, not damaged, um, fed, <laughs> um, you know, for, for that, we're, uh, we're thankful. Um, one thing, one thing that I ch do try to do and that, that keeps me in check with whatever my tolerance <laughs> levels happen to be is to, um, remain empathetic and, and to teach them and to teach them empathy is important to me and i think that's uh something that that um humans can boast is that we have empathy uh and that's and when people lose that that's when stuff kind of falls apart and um and so to 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 teach that and to and to and to maintain that like i you know, it's having children is like, it, it, it does put a mirror up to you because, you know, you can, you see yourself so much in these little <laughs> bastards. And, <laughs> and, and, and I know, it's like when, amazing. It's crazy. Like when, when Louie's driving me nuts or, or when my oldest son is, I'm just like, God, that is some weird behavior. Why is he so weird? And I'm oh like, my oh, God. I did that exact thing. I, it's yeah. so weird because my DNA. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, and it, like if, when you don't understand something, you know, that frustration level and I, you know, I'll raise my voice. I'm guilty. I mean, I do, I, I can be, I can get scary. And I, and then I see my kid looks scared and I'm like, Oh no, 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 no. I, I remember feeling that way. And I, and not knowing why my dad felt the, Okay, and then and then I'm like, oh, and this is how my dad felt. This is that's why my dad did this. And so, yeah. you know, to stop to put the brakes on and say, okay, all right, hey, buddy, I'm sorry, I just, I'm sorry, I just scared the hell out of you, but here's here's why, and here's why I felt that way, and here's um, <laughs> let's 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 talk, and then I'll and then I talk till I'm blue in the face, and he's like, what are we talking about? And I'm like, right. never mind, go outside. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, to to yeah, be empathetic and and learn with your children and and learn from your mistakes as a parent. Uh, yeah. Don't try not to get caught in you know yeah. you know bad 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 patterns. Yeah. Bad patterns are the worst. They're the worst. Right, like, I think for me, what's oh, go, sorry, Jill. No, I was just gonna say, just gonna introduce everybody. If you're coming in, this is Cullen Moss. We're talking all things Outer Banks, all things parenting, all things Charleston. Yes, yes. And we will get to that. I just wanted my dad was really funny because he would just go sit in his car and turn his music on and just sit in the car. And I thought he was insane. And I'm like. That man was brilliant because you know he was away from us and he wasn't um you know losing his crap. So I it's yeah. funny. There's just, well, you have to maintain they weren't one of yours. Um, you have to, you know, <laughs> Sorry. You have to maintain a sense of self. Like you can't, yes. you know, you and and uh, I say that I think unselfishly, like that that you if if you if you lose all sense of self, which is so easy to do, like you just when because you do, I'm not saying shortchange your kids, but but when you put it, it all into parenting and don't have anything left for yourself, you're not doing your kids any favors because no. there's you're you're gonna burn out, uh, I think. And so, you know, fortunately, like my wife and I can there there is a back and forth. Um, to where she, you know, we, we try to give the other one, Hey, go out and take some time, go, yes. go be you anywhere else. And, or, you know, or I'll, or I'll take the kids on a walk, you know, just, right. you got to have that moment to breathe. And, um, and my, my, my wife is much, she's, she, um, she's very conscientious about it. And so she gives you know, I'm like, this is my moment to breathe too. Like, I'm not, I don't, I don't have to break up a fight. I don't hear anybody whining. I think right now it's cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So thank you for talking about your family and your kids. Oh yeah. Um, so let's talk about Charleston favorites in 60 seconds. Mm -hmm. so like what we're going to ask you, I'm going to ask you some things around Charleston or Mount Pleasant Park Circle, wherever, and just tell us your favorite. Ready? I'm very bad at this. Okay. 
Ready? Let's go. Okay, your favorite park. Um, Wanamaker Park, North Trail, maybe, or Alhambra. 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 Right. Alhambra. Um, sorry. <laughs> Lost my mind. All right. Favorite restaurant. Um, you don't have to do Leon. one. How about top three? Okay. One. Leon's Basil. Oh, I love basil. Um, uh, husk is amazing. Uh, crazy expensive, but boy, it's tasty. So yummy. Okay. Favorite place to shop? <laughs> You're so full of baloney. Um, <laughs> where, where did your wife's Mother's Day present come from? My heart. Oh, oh you gave her love. That's oh, cool. Lord. Um, yes. I, I, I don't know That's okay. uh, a favorite place to shop. Um, okay. That's bail. no problem. <laughs> I said bail. Um, Okay, help me. All right. I hate TJ Maxx. <laughs> do you know Sebastian Maniscalco, that comedian? Yes. Okay, do you know his bit about TJ Maxx being like downtown Beirut? <laughs> oh. You have to watch. Anyway, he's so funny. All right, um, favorite beach? Um, oh, yep. Yeah, um, Sullivan's Island is really nice and, and uh, quiet. Uh, especially out like near uh, my wife's uh, old, um, old hood. Um, there's just some real cool, quiet patches, but it's, it's getting so small that yes. that beach is shrinking. Um, but just the, on the other side, it's like sort of the sound side, I guess where it's, you can, you know, you can wade out so far in that clear water and just, especially with the little kids. Yeah. The tide pools and hermit crabs and sand dollars and, Yep. Starfish, it's magic. Magical. How about coffee shop? Kudu um, on Vanda Holst. Vanda do you get a beer or do you get a coffee there? Depends on what time I'm there. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's that's a good spot that I never I didn't know about it till uh, my my buddy Vince Fabra, um, who does um, improv. Do you know Vince? He does stand-up comedy. He's a stand-up comedian, and he and he does um, uh, um, public. He's a public speaker, uh, and he does uh, improv at Theater Ninety Nine, where my wife and I do improv. So that leads me to the next question: Like, what would be a fun night out for you and your wife? Would you maybe partake in the improv? Yes, absolutely. Whether we're on stage or watching, those guys are brilliant. Um, um, uh, Mary Kay has a posse is one of my favorite shows uh, up there. Um, Spoons is great. They've got, they've got just some brilliant um, improvisationalists over there, uh, Brandy and Camille and Greg, and it's, uh, uh, they're, they're good, they're great, I love them. Um, so yeah, going to see some improv, going to, uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of good theater in town too. Um, yeah, go, go see some improv, get a, get a bite to eat. Anywhere, <laughs> anywhere, so good. Just being Not away from real good things. My kids. Now, do you ever take your kids, like just you and like a daddy date? <laughs> Four kids. All right, kids. Um, like if you were to take them on a daddy date, so to speak, where's something fun that you like to do with your children besides go to the beach or the park? Like, is there a Sky jump trampoline spot have, or something. No, we we are bad parents. We did we no, haven't done not. anything like that. But absolutely um, not. Uh, they might be too little. The littles might be too little for all that foolishness. For about, for they, they would dig it. Like we've I, we've done Chuck E. Cheese. Twice. Oh Lord Jesus! What? I'm sorry. I can't. This is the worst. I can't. I'm not going back. Y'all, did you guys know that Chuck E. Cheese has carry out right now during the quarantine? Oh my, of all the places. You're going to say, like, oh, like you woke that. up on a Friday morning and you're like, tonight we're getting Chuck E. Cheese to go. Like, who, who does that? I don't know. By the way, spoiler, that's that's what I'm getting the wife. I'm going to go pick no! up Chuck E. Cheese oh, to pick out tomorrow for Mother's Day. Disgusting. Um, I'm going to get some square pizza. And Chuck E. Cheese is the worst. People don't do their, they don't mind their kids. Their kids are sassy on the mouth. I don't like it. <laughs> sassy on the mouth, children running wild. 
Boogers <laughs> on everything. Lawlessness. Frustrate. Like, you can see the like, worst of humanity. Yeah, there's like pee pee molecules like on. Always vomit in the ball pit. It's <laughs> got to be. Uh, that's awful. But what, what the kid, like, just, just walking the kids around. Like, we do, like, the, um, the North Trail there at Wanamaker Park. Like, we did that today. <laughs> one of them was fine at, with it. The other one whined about half the time. That's how but, it is. <laughs> but, but we got home and he was like, we got back to the car. He's like, you know what? That was fun. That was fun. I did, I did like that. I did like that a lot. Even though I was yelling at you, telling you you're a very bad father. Um, it, they just have to torture us. <laughs> um, but that, and they, and we've got uh, just going up to Park Circles, nice too. Like uh, Evo Pizza is wonderful. That's a favorite that I've yeah. got. Matt Macintosh, man, he's the best. Yeah. Evo's yeah, awesome. Yeah, Park Circle's got lots of goodies for sure. Mm -hmm. Real good. Okay, so where would you take your wife on a date? Like, say you had a free kids night out. We talked about improv with that. Where is there anything else you'd like to let us know about your favorite places in Charleston for maybe um, dating? Yeah, the, um, Husk is uh, great, okay. and then um, the and then what's the roof tide? The roof tide <laughs> down. Off of, uh, uh huh. Not the Y. Isn't it Vindu? Street. Yeah, what's that? There's no, I'm saying Vindu. But I'm, and then there's one called the Watch. Not the Watch. Okay. It's like it's like this place. It's kind of got weird astro turf outside and big plastic white chairs. Yep. Yeah. Um, the library at Vindu is that it? The li that might have been, been a, a couple of decades. This oh, might have been a while back. What's the one that's an old church? Um, that, and there's all the there's all the um, stuff written on the ceilings in this big in the this big old church. You know which? Is that one? I'm doing really good at selling this. Is that five church? Is that five church? Isn't there a place called Five Church? Yes. Yeah, that place is good. Um, <laughs> since right after they opened, I haven't been there in a long time. Five Church so. is good. I've had several good experiences there. Okay. Um, and then um, walking, you know, one of those, one of those places. It's great. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, the walking trees walk around. Uh, <laughs> rainbow. Oh, my, he's walking. <laughs> yeah, just you know, rainbow with the battery. Just um, walk around. <laughs> but oh, the, oh, fun places for the kids. One of my, the aquarium. Is yes. Awesome. They lo we love taking them to the aquarium. And they, they yes. it's one place that they don't ever complain about. Um, Even my kids, they're, you know, older. They love when we have a pass for the aquarium. They love it. Yeah. But seriously, they're doing the, the battery. Like, I I don't think I'd ever hung out of the battery until, until like a week ago. Yes. And we went and I was like, well, this is really nice. We should do this. Yeah. <laughs> Even when there's not a, a quarantine. Um, but then if there's no quarantine, there's a bazillion gazillion people. So but um, so this is the last question I want to ask you. Are there any special causes or nonprofits that you support or anything close to your heart here in Charleston locally? Abs um yeah. Yep. <laughs> um the tutus for turtles. Um foundation is one that's near and dear to my heart and they um that's you know young turtles that have been abandoned um who don't have the chance to pursue a career in dance or ballet they don't um, have tutus they, and it's and they it's a uh, it's it raises money you're it raises money to uh supply turtles with the uh, the shoes the tutus uh the what is that, pull tool um yeah um <laughs> what a marginalized group i'm so thankful that you have gotten yeah in a time where everybody tries to out marginalize each other i think that the turtles who don't have access to um dance wear i think it's can, criminal they win um agreed i would i Oh, God. I don't think about this question. You guys, I, 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 I like it because you about know this question, I, and I didn't, and I forgot to think about. That's about okay. It, or, or but you it. are 
I mean, and to your to your credit, you've you relocated here as you know, kind of recently, three years. You've been working hard on hit shows. So no judgment. If you well, do get to the point where you feel like all the turtles have everything that they need, just let us know. We can maybe find one for you. Tell, you guys tell me what, what are what are some what are some worthwhile nonprofit organizations or uh, you know, charities. Um that, that deserve some attention. Okay, is this a real question? Yeah. Okay, I have some. Um, my sister's house, yep. it focuses on domestic violence and abuse of women and children. Uh, Low Country Food Bank is huge. And along the food line too, in fact, in Park Circle, there is one called Fresh Future Farms. And it's this amazing African-American woman who is setting up urban gardens to help bring that into like, fresh vegetables and fruit into um, that culture. And it's called Fresh, what is it? Future Farms. Fresh Future Farms. And they also work closely with another organization called Fields to Families. And Fields to Families takes all their extras and distributes them to places in need from farmers. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I think the food crisis in Charleston is a big deal. The mm -hmm. food networks and the food apartheid, it's like this whole new thing that they're recognizing in um, urban communities. But, mm. um, yeah, the Dream Center Clinic provides free medical um, to 6,000 patients a year in North Charleston as well. So, anyway, I can go on and on. But yeah, that, that's, that's great. Um, that's, that's good to know. Like, uh, cause, um, I need to know about this stuff. And, yeah, and, I, and I think that's great. Like, I think that brings a cool light to who you are, the learning yeah. aspect and the fact that you're new, but you're plugged in yes. and your kids are in North Charleston schools and you want to know what's going on and you, you see the community. That I means more to me than like, truly a few times to choose the turtles. <laughs> Yeah, one of my favorites, I'll just say, is Low Country Youth Services. It's a group that work um, with at-risk um, youth, and I feel like that's such a such a critical age. You know, it's so weird to be a teenager, and if your dynamic at home isn't, you you know, if you're, it's hard if you're positioned for success with all the kind of norms. But you know, people who don't have the most uh, great, home, you know, background or home life. I, you know, youth, teenager years are bizarre and weird, and I feel like that's when things can turn. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is. It is such a bizarre time. Just, it's it's just what an awkward, <laughs> an awkward <laughs> time of life. And yeah, to, to, I'm just thinking if I, if my, yeah, if my parents hadn't been wonderful parents, they were like. Yeah, and I think, you know, even, and we hear, anyway, I could go on and on. Um, thanks a million. I know I have the audio this time. I'm so thankful. Very good. This is so good. We're very grateful. We're super excited about your show. Yes. Really, we, we will have you back on whenever you're ready to make a season two announcement. You just let us know. Um, we can have a private dinner first, and you can make the big announcement, however you want to work that. Let's <laughs> Since we're all best friends now. Um, but we really are grateful. We're excited. You're part of our community. All the things. Well, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Dee Dee, for having me on. I really appreciate it. And Thanks thank so much. The, thanks for uh, these the, this list of uh, things to keep my eyes on and help out. I also, because I need to find some um, service hours, like for, for my for my son. Um, for his college applications and stuff. And so it's good to know um, like yeah. some charitable organizations to where he could maybe donate some time and I could donate some with him. That's yeah, awesome. that'd be great. And we could just come and watch you do it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what you doing? doing? What you doing, Colin? Hi. Not much. I'm here. I didn't know you were coming. Yeah. Why just are you both here? Just sewing tutus. <laughs> <laughs> the bloody fingers from the needles poking the hands of the oh my god that was awesome thank you for that laugh. thank you so much colin y'all thanks a million yeah, yeah thank you thanks. i had a ball Bye, everybody thank you right. you bet happy mother's day to your wife and happy mother's day to all them to all to all mothers 
Happy All Mother's of them. <laughs> Bye, guys. Every last mother. <laughs> All right. Bye. Thanks so much. You bet. Thank you. Keep on.